Cousin Internet. It's me, Cousin Todd, with Mama's Comedy Show. And with me is Cousin Ali. Oh my God, you're doing it again? <laughs> so, yeah, last week's episode, and actually, did you listen to it? I did not. I didn't listen back because I was in it. Uh, no, yeah, it sounded... Uh, when we finished recording the podcast, we realized, or I realized, that my computer was recording uh, from the computer's microphone and not our soundboard with our mics going into it. So, uh, but actually, it sounded fine, but not as crystal clear as this. Um, Pepsi clear. So, uh, how was your week? First of all, um, my week was was good, busy. I started the new semester of uh, stand up classes. Yeah. So that was that's fun. I got a ton of students. Um, I saw Top Gun. Oh, how was Maverick? It? I hear it's amazing. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Like I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. It's just it's one of those sequels, much like um the Lethal Weapons one, where you're like, This is just as good, if not better, than the first one. You what was it? Uh what was the line in Lethal Lethal Weapon uh two? Uh diplomatic immunity. immunity. <laughs> it's been revoked. <laughs> I hope that if but, I ever kill someone that I can say something really cool beforehand. Yes. Yes. That's like, why I practice improv is just in case. <laughs> just right before you kill them, just say something super badass like fluffy nuggets. And then the thing is, like, I'll say something that's not awesome. And then you'll just see this look on my face of, ah, fuck. fuck. And then I just have to have to kill him. Because yeah. I can't have him telling people. Yeah, no, no, no. And then what do you say if it's like a murder suicide? Like, do you still do the cool line before i off myself yeah <laughs> I, I mean if there's a camera involved and i i can't imagine <laughs> not doing it on camera that's how you know if i if i if someone tells you that i've uh offed myself you say well where's the tape and then when they're like there is no tape that's how you know it's murder uh-huh um so uh now nah, ask me how my week is todd how yep. was your week uh well you know uh end of last week uh renette my my queen <laughs> oh my god <laughs> is she uh <laughs> that's the only what i call her when we go to walmart um <laughs> yes queen uh but she got the rona oh no way yeah she got the rona uh. um so the we were planning on a vacation this current week but because she was on the rona uh we we couldn't can, do the vacation can i ask you a question yeah does does your dick have rona now Oh no, no! Ooh, it is. God, it thank is, God, man. I I put the uh, vaccine, uh, the one you gave me, where you had yeah. to orally insert it yeah. into my pee pee. Yeah, yeah, that uh, one. I think it kept me safe. Yeah, it was so much fun, guys. The people at Publix were pissed, but it was <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, the pharmacy tech was like, "That's my job." <laughs> um, but here's the difference from when I had because I had it a few months ago, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that's why I was I was constantly negative. Uh, throughout this, that we were we were isolated. The minute she tested, I was like, I was like, get the fuck in that room and don't come out. And then when when she got tested, what 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 did you say then? Oh no, I sh I didn't give her the results of her test. I just told her that she was positive. <laughs> and, no, but here's the difference: when I was positive, I went into my office. And I was like, everyone stay away from me. And I had the most productive week of my life. Yeah. And it was amazing. Uh, to the point where I was saying once a year, I want to do like a COVID week. Not that I have to get COVID, but like where I, I isolate for a week to get shit done. Yeah, not so much her. She does not do the isolation thing mm -mm. well. So like she just kept walking out into the living room going like, oh, I miss all of you. She like just she's just touching everything. Yeah. She's like I I miss this doorknob. I miss this the countertop and like I'm circling around the kitchen <laughs> like to avoid her as much as possible. And I like part of me is thinking like I'm going to have to choke her out. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> but then you can't get that close to her. Right. Well, that's why like you got to get up behind them. Yeah. Like you get up behind them, you cut off the breathing yeah. so that they can't exhale it on you. Yeah. That's good, and then they're call. out. Good call. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, I got a lot of Halo Infinite multiplayer done. Um, nice. I finished Dragon Ball Super, which was great. Awesome. Um, I started One Punch Man. What is that? It's an anime 
about a guy who wanted to be a hero, and I'm only one episode in, so this is the this uh, the summary that I have. Wanted to be a hero, so he trained for three years, but then when he came out, was like, "All right, I'm ready to be a hero." Turns out he overtrained, and he can defeat anyone in just one punch. Oh, wow! So it's not exciting for him. Okay. So it's more of a comedy than anything, yeah. but that is that the idea? More or less, at least for the first season. Yeah, more. and that's where I am right now. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, to our left is Captain Never Gets Laid, so he knows <laughs> all about this stuff. Yeah. Look at me, look oh. at me. <laughs> I am the captain now. <laughs> I've never got into, like, anime and all that. I, I, somebody turned me on to it, and there's a lot of fucking in those things. It depends. Like I don't see. Yeah, it I mean, just the who, cartoons. Who is showing you these? Was it like that guy that gives you the back rubs and like, hey, watch this? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Look at those tentacle dicks. See, right now I want to go watch it again. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm not like a huge anime person, but uh, the Dragon Ball. I, I mean, that's been going on for like, what was it 84 that it started? 94, 2004, 2014, almost 40 years. I, I saw Dragon Ball P. Was that it, was good. What is that? Uh, it's it's the anime that I'm watching right now. Oh, uh, and they fan. just pee everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. You're just in mouths. You you got down the wrong the wrong hole. Or so to did speak. I? <laughs> There's no wrong hole. Um, but uh, you know what? We do have a, a mission today. I I reached out to some people through our social media, asking for problems nice. that we might be able to solve because we're good at it. Listen, you and I are both divorced. Yes. Uh, we both made poor life choices. Yes. So I feel like we've learned from our mistakes. Mm-hmm. We haven't, though. You got married <laughs> right. again. Right. Yeah, yeah. You but, dumbass. But that's the, who's to say that this is going to be the one that sticks? You know, I mean, <laughs> I, just last week on the podcast, I was saying, I hope one of my books does well <laughs> enough that I could knock up a, another chick. <laughs> um, so... I have, let me, let me go to the, the questions. The idea is we will take the, the problem mm-hmm. that they have okay, and we will give what would be considered good advice okay. and then we will also give what would be bad advice and then we're going to give them the advice that would be absolutely terrible. And okay. then we let like them it. choose. Which advice they're going to go yeah, with. Which okay. ones. Yeah, which that, that way it, it's not up to like, if we, if we say, hey, this is the advice we have for you. And then, you know, it turns out they are now part of a, a murder investigation. <laughs> they Then they could come back to us and go, you guys told us that. No, no, no. We gave you three options. Yeah. You just chose you the wrong cho- one. You, you chose poorly. Uh, well, for example, uh, Josh, you're here. Do you have any, any problems in your life or anything that you need advice on? How to move out of my mother's house. Oh, you live with him? Yeah. Uh, his mom lives with him. How to kill your mom without anyone suspecting. That's one of my favorite shows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. You get. How old are you now? 59. Oh, so yeah. You got to wait until she's 65 for the life insurance to kick in. No, 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 no. If I die after 65, he loses Oh, shit. So you're on a ticking time clock. Like, you yeah, have dude. to kill her before she turns 65? Which is ironic because at 65, that's when she loses that fight. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's easier to do it after 65. Yeah. Have you ever tried killing a 64-year-old? It's hard. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're a lot more, they're a lot stronger than you think. Yeah, at 65, they're just like, fuck it, do it. So, uh, no, but like a, re- like a real thing. You don't have to be specific and it doesn't have to be dramatic. Just like something in your life, they're like, oh, yeah, I'd like to do that. Finding a new job. Okay. All right. So let's let's agree on a good advice thing okay. first. Um, I would say to find a new job, uh, find something that you are passionate about and uh, look online, do some research into that field, and then start applying yourself. And if you are in a job right now that you feel like you're not happy with, leaving that job to go after your dream isn't a bad thing because how long will it take you? If, if your dream fails, uh, how long will it take you to get back to where you are right now at your right. current job? Not very long at all. No. So, so I feel like that's 
good advice. Yeah, that's good. Um, my good advice would be to, yeah, kind of kind of go with something that you're good at. Okay, Don't, not just your passions, but something you're good at. Because um, you can do your passions uh, if if the job is good enough and flexible enough, you can still pursue your passions. Um, so find something that you're good at. Your strong suits. Um, update your resume. Get that out to everyone, anyone mm-hmm. that you can mm-hmm. do that. Uh, get that out and be, you know, be consistent. Keep reaching out to people. And then, you know, in a couple of or in a couple of days, if they've not responded say, hey, I appreciate you taking a look at my resume. If you haven't done anything, if you have any more questions, you know, here's my email. Let me know if you need anything else, because that's not badgering. That's more just if you need anything else, let me know. So you're still on their radar. Right. And also uh, on that, your email address, if it has an AOL or Hotmail don't. Uh, at the end of it, yeah, don't. don't. Get a new email address. Yeah, get a Gmail account. Because I will immediately think you're 97. Exactly. Uh, all right. So now the, the what might be considered bad advice, but might, might work in your situation, uh, I would say, have you looked into OnlyFans? I, it's a great, it's a great opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. His, his mom just went, OnlyFans? Like, she doesn't know what it is. Show her, show her on your phone. The You have the app. Show right? her on the doll. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, my bad advice would be quit your job immediately, your current job. If you don't like it, quit it now. Mm, yeah, okay? That's good. And then settle. Like, whatever you can get, man. Like, anything. Yeah, like OnlyFans right. or blowing crack whores. Whatever you can do to make money. But quit your job before you have a job. Yeah. I don't like that his was like he below the crack whore. Right. Well, you know, but, but you know, that's just that's just a second option if the first yeah. one doesn't doesn't so now I guess for your third piece of advice, uh, which would be the really awful advice, mm-hmm. I would say, uh, why are you looking for another job aren't you jewish don't you own the banks that's what i was always told yeah um my really awful advice which might be considered good advice is kill your mom before 65 and you don't need to get a job oh shit that's right all right so now you have three options to choose from uh what the fuck is happening in this room right now no like there's like is there a bomb about to go off I don't know what this is. What what is that? I feel like there's a giant vibrator on the roof. Oh, maybe maybe that's where I left it. <laughs> Josh right. is starting his OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, it ended. The the sound and don't worry people if you couldn't hear that. <laughs> We're safe. It, it kind of sounded like a a tornado was coming. I was like, um, um, I don't like All right. That. So so here's what people have have said. Okay. Um Cousin Rachel, yes. Cousin Rachel says, "I would like on advice on how to stop eating so much junk food." Oh, All okay, right? good. So, I, that's a that's an easy one for me. I've been doing that. Yeah, both of us. You and yeah. I have both struggled with the junk food. So, so I think good advice: don't let it in your house. Yes. If it's it, in your house, you'll eat it. Exactly. Um, don't let it in your house. Also, find better things to snack, um, just healthier things to snack, because when you start getting that urge and, and find something that's like a good substitute. If you if you crave salty, find a healthy, salty type of thing. Giggity. Um, yes. Um, and if you're a sweet person like I am, find healthier, low fat, low calorie options. So at least it satisfy, satisfies that craving. Uh, for me, it's been uh, cereal. Cereal. Like oh, cereal man. with, I'll do almond milk uh, for my cereal at night, and it just kind of, and I'll just a little bowl will hit that sweet spot, mm-hmm. and it's not a huge calorie intake. Yeah, see, I'm doing keto, and I miss fruity pebbles. Oh yeah, the fruity great. pebbles are so good because it makes you poop weird. And you know what's frustrating about like fruity pebbles is that I will look at like the legit Bran Flakes cereal. Mm-hmm. And it has more calories than Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, it's like, it's weird. But Fruity Pebbles is made from angel semen. All right, I, I believe You guys it. knew that. That's how you get in. Yeah. <laughs> you got to suck them <laughs> off. They're like, hey, Todd, you've already made it into heaven. I'm like, give me that Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> I'm not done. Uh, all right, so that's the good advice. Uh, now I would say bad advice to, of getting off of junk food is... Go all in, like eat as much junk food as you can until you get sick 
And then when you vomit, you won't want that junk food again. But you have to do it like one junk food. Like if Reese's Peanut Butter Cups is your thing, eat it, eat Reese's Peanut Butter Cups until you vomit and then move on to Pop-Tarts. Like yeah. work your way yeah. until you're sick of all of it. Yeah, that's good advice, though. Um, I would say buy your junk food. I wouldn't eat it all. But let's just say this is going to get a little pricey. But you know what? How much is health worth to you? It's invaluable. You you buy all the junk food you can. Let's just say a big bag of Doritos. That's that's your kryptonite. Yep. You buy a big bag of Doritos, bring it to the house, eat one chip, and then throw the bag away. Because it you got that chip in you, and now giddy, giddy. it's gone. Right. You know what? The bag's gone. So just eat one thing. If you're going to get some ice cream, get one scoop right. and then throw the ice cream away. That's that that does get expensive, but I can see how that would work because then yeah. you'd be frustrated. You're like, I don't want to spend the money on this food. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, and now for a really awful advice, um, I would say, you know, if you just continue doing what you're doing, maybe even you have to up the sugar. Uh, diabetes will <laughs> will really. <laughs> force you to to work on that how heavy is a foot that's how many pounds you're gonna lose <laughs> my ex's dad uh-huh. uh was one of those people who refused to change like i mean to the point where and we know people right now who are going through you know medical expenses mm-hmm. as a result of this but but imagine like the people that we know now if they said ah my doctors don't know anything and then just continue doing fuck all whatever they wanted yeah. Uh, and and then, you know, my whole thing was like, don't do you want to see your your daughter walk down the right. aisle? Do you want to like Jesus Christ, man? It's crazy because I got a feeling like I saw a documentary on something that was like a there there was like this big pandemic and so many people were like I, and this is a fictional thing, but so many people were like, fuck the doctors, fuck the science. I'm I'm <laughs> going to be fine. I don't care about walking my daughter. It's going to be fine. So I that movie was it was very funny, but Ali, I think there's Ali, something that was yeah? that was that was real life. No, it wasn't called real life. I don't remember what no. it was called. Yeah, maybe maybe the, the news. news. Yeah. Yeah, it was called the news. Um uh, Okay, you- so my my awful advice would be this. I don't know if you've ever heard of there were there was a time where teenagers were soaking tampons in vodka. Mm-hmm. And and they would still get drunk. They you would get drunk up quicker. You. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, crush up some Doritos, stick it in your hoo ha, and you're not eating junk food, but you're still absorbing it. That's that's a good point. And then when you're pooping, it's that much closer to the oh, exit. Oh, when you fart, it's just nacho cheesy. Can you imagine? Uh, because I love the flaming hot man. That would just Ooh. wreck my bee hole. Do you have any idea how hard I would be? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right, so so cousin Rachel, you have three options to choose. Actually, you have six because we're we're giving them. Yeah, we're giving you gold. Yes. Um, so, uh, cousin Stephen, uh, this is another diet based one. Okay. Uh, it says I've been dieting for the last year. I've lost close to sixty pounds. Wow, nice. Uh, kept it off and managed to drop about three sizes in men's clothes. But when I wear my Mrs. Danvers. Angry housekeeper from the from Rebecca novel dress. I can't fit into a smaller size yet. What's wrong? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, good advice. Congratulations. Yeah. On being down sixty pounds. That's amazing. That's really good. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, when you put on the your cosplay dress uh, and you, you can't fit into a smaller size yet, good advice is you know just keep doing what you're doing and take your time. And that smaller dress, you'll fit into that eventually. Yeah. And also, you know what? There's no shame in buying, just getting a a more form fitting, you know, a little bit larger, but be proud of what you're doing. Like you're doing amazing work and then have that goal, like have the dress there and like, all right, when I do that, when I, when I get down, I can actually wear that and set it as a goal. Yeah. uh, I've done that. I've, I've had shirts that I'm like, oh, I don't fit in this shirt, but. If right I now, see it every day. one of my favorite shirts I still have. It was a long time ago when I used to fit into a medium. And yeah. if I reach my goal, 
Uh, my goal was losing 48 pounds by the time my birthday comes around. I'll be 48. If I reach that, I should be able to fit back into that shirt. Right. So I've got another 26 to go. In how many days? Uh, 36 now. Oh, dude, if you just don't eat, you, you'll hit that in no time. I'm starting to shove Doritos in my ass. <laughs> yes. Uh, as far as bad advice for uh, Cousin Steven, um, I think the bad advice would be um, just squeeze into the smaller dress and make other people uncomfortable. <laughs> you know? Like, yes. that's not, who cares? That's, it's you that mm-hmm. we're concerned with. Uh, yeah, don't worry about what other people are doing. Um, here's my advice for you is, have you thought about body painting? Um, because, yes, it's form-fitting, <laughs> but you don't have to worry about your weight and the size. Um, they, they make some amazing things. It'll make it look like the dress is on you. It's pretty cool. Just don't sweat. All right. Now for the, the really awful advice. Uh, I say take that 60 pounds that you lost in a bag already don't like this <laughs> and uh and just put the dress on that <laughs> send that in your place that way you can stay at home get all these pictures of a bag filled of fat in this dress i think that's a that's you know that's what a good one that's that's another viable option that's a win-win that's a win-win uh my bad advice is to this is an awful Oh, awful, awful advice is to fucking lose weight, you fat fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's, he's down 60 pounds, which I think is more than this either. This is awful advice, Todd. Either it's more than you and I have been able to by actively trying. <laughs> I know. Combined. <laughs> um, all right. So then we have Cousin Brandy. Cousin Brandy says. She's a stripper with a name named Brandy. Uh, no, it's Brandy with an I, so you would think, oh, but she's yeah. she's not a stripper. Oh. But her problem is one that a stripper might have, and it's, my problem is, guys always want to bang me, but not date me. Okay. Uh, so good advice. Uh, I say, you know what? You, you don't bang them. You know, make them... Make them fall in love with you for who you are. Because I know Brandy. She's a great person. Like, she's mm-hmm. a really good person. She's got a lot more to offer than just a hole. So, yeah. so yeah, you know what? You're worth more. Don't make, don't give it away for free uh, unless they're ready to buy that cow. Yeah. Um, I would say, speaking of worth, I was about to say that. It's a good segue. Um, know your worth, and then other people will have to match that and know what you are worth. So know that you you are worth and worthy of respect and love. And the minute anyone does something that steps outside of that, bye. You know what? Yeah. They don't they don't get to sample anything. And you know what, Ali? I am going to to dovetail off of your good advice with my bad advice okay. and say know your worth and start charging these people for sex. That way you're at least getting something out of it if they end up ghosting you. Because yeah. you're good enough to bang, you should get some bling bling out of it. Damn right. Blah, blah. Damn right. And I'm going to I'm gonna pigeon tail okay. off of the previous um, <laughs> bad advice and I'm going to give mine. Okay. Um, consider it an exercise regimen by banging all these people. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe that will get you into some self-confidence. You know, your body's going to be a lot more banging. No, no pun intended. Um, and maybe that's how you find a good mate. Okay. Now, I will penguin tail <laughs> off of that and, and say, uh, just start eating. Uh and make yourself unfuckable. I'm not saying that large people are not fuckable. No. But I'm saying the guys who are going after you right now will not be the guys who go after you. Because they will be going after old Brandy. But yes. yeah, you just chow away. Enjoy life. Know your worth. I'm, I'm going to turkey tail off Whoa, of that. Shit. And I'm going to say what you have to do is get that 60-pound bag that Steven has. Uh huh. Paint your face on it, oh. cut a hole in it, and let them fuck that. If you can, you imagine cutting a <laughs> hole in a bag of fat and then fucking it. I mean, what, what do you hold do on, though? Hold, I'm imagining it. Hold on. What do you do if the guy calls you up the next day and was like, "You were amazing." <laughs> it's never been like that before. 
And you're a squirter. A squirting everywhere. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we have Cousin Rianne. Uh, Cousin Rianne says she has an addiction to Jim. Some guy uh, named Jim. This is your Rianne. Oh, Rayan. Oh, Rayan. Sorry. Uh, Cousin Rayan said she's addicted to Jim. Okay. So you should find this Jim. I, I do know it's it, her gym is spelled G Y M. All right. Well, it's, there's no vagina, and it's not a guy, guy, if nope. that where she, where she exercises. But she always says that she's addicted to gym. She's got dates with gym all the time. Uh, so, uh, good advice. You know what? Uh, have a rest day every here, here and there because the going to the gym is great. And, uh, but, but you know, what? rest up, take care of your body and your mind. Yeah. Um, uh, Rand, we we've discussed this. Um, yes, you're addicted. You sound to the like gym. you're lecturing her right now. Uh, we've discussed this. <laughs> um, we've had we've had conversations about that. Is how I should say this. Um, that it, I think it's wonderful that you have a gym addiction. Um, you know the reason you got into that is because you wanted a better life for yourself. You wanted a better. You've dropped so much weight, um, and it. I I'm proud of you. So continue to have that addiction, but make room for yourself. Like Todd said, mentally, you know, you still got to have fun. Don't put the gym ahead of things like spending time with your family, spending time with your boyfriend and touching his cock. Right. Uh, so now bad advice. Okay. If you're addicted to the gym, uh, I would say find some other addictions as well. You know, like maybe take up heroin. Because I don't know if you know this, but I have I go to the gym a lot, and I have never seen someone on heroin at the gym. Yeah. So maybe that's the break you need. Get addicted to heroin because you won't want to go to the gym on those heroin days. I'm going to ducktail <laughs> off of that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, I love the other addiction. That's where I was going to go. But don't do heroin. Do cocaine. Because then your heart is constantly going. You don't have to go to the gym. You'll be working a lot. Um, you'll be walking around the house. You're going to talk a lot faster. It's the gym your heart, Yes. You, your heart might explode. <laughs> but guess what? You don't have to go to the gym anymore. That's true. Because you can't go to the gym if, if you're, you're dead. dead. And then with crack... Uh, I've got a funny crack story one day we'll tell. Uh, I mean, it's not my story to tell, but it's pretty great. Uh, but I, and I think you know it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So for awful advice, as far as being addicted to the gym, um, man, uh, I think, uh, you know, go the opposite direction, quit cold Turkey and then, Opposite to the advice that we were giving other people, just start eating. Yeah. Like both ends, Doritos in your mouth and up your butt. Yeah. Like pack them from both sides because you know what? You, you might find that you like that even more. Yeah. Um, my awful advice, move in. Move into the gym. Stay there. Just 24-7, you're always in the gym. Don't worry about other relationships because they don't understand. They don't understand the love you have for the gym and the love the gym has for you. You don't need relationships. You don't need other people. Just be at the gym. Right. And if, if it's a, a sexual thing, there's tons of things at the gym you can fuck. Yeah, like so equipment. many things. I, I mean, trust me, I was at the gym the other day and I saw the girl, uh, she was laying on her back and she was doing those pelvic thrusts uh -huh. with like the weight. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I, I, I st stood next to her and watched her for 15 minutes until she eventually walked away. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm certain she enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You know, what? I go the, the opposite direction, like at the gym, like because I see guys like staring at those girls mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want to fucking be associated. So like I, I like my brain starts to be like, uh, don't even look. Don't, and now I'm doing like that hyper-focused, definitely not looking at you thing, where it's probably more awkward than if I actually looked at you. Like I am like trying to burn a hole through the wall with laser vision. Uh, and, and it's the same thing anytime that I'd ever gone to a strip club. I'm like, <laughs> eye contact, 
just eye yes. contact. And, and to the point where they're probably like, this dude's a fucking serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> He hasn't looked at my titties once, uh, and I'm like, I just, I got respectful eye contact. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, Todd, I've got a problem. Yeah, what's your problem? I like going out with my friends, uh -huh. uh, especially in the comedy you, you, comedy scene. You go out, you do some open mics, right? And I like to, I like to buy some drinks, mm -hmm. and I buy drinks for a lot of people, right? And I end up spending a lot of money, right? So. That's my issue right now is I'm spending too much money buying drinks for friends. That's okay. my problem. All right. So then I would say good advice for that. Go out with a smaller group of friends, something that's a little bit more affordable. Or you do the game where you each take your uh, credit card mm -hmm. and you put it in a basket and you have the bartender reach in and grab one out randomly. So it's like credit card roulette. Oh, yeah. Whoever's card they pull out pays for drinks. That way you're not paying for it every time. Thank you. Uh, all right. Now, I'll give you some bad advice. Mm -hmm. um, steal a credit card. Not yours. Someone else's. Use that. Buy drinks for everyone. I like that and one. Put a fat tip on there. Because if you put a real fat tip, like that bartender's going to cover your ass. Yeah. All right. I like that one. Um, and then for uh, really awful advice, I would say uh, for, for the awful advice... Um, why aren't you making more money? You know, like if you really want to be a baller, be a baller, buy the drinks for your friends, but also maybe deal some drugs on the side, make that money back, get your friends hooked on different drugs. And that way, while you're buying drinks, really you're making a profit off of them because they're like, shit, I got to do some blow in the bathroom. Uh, but you're the good dude selling it. I, I'm going to go with uh, the third advice, the third option. <laughs> All right. I'm going with that I one. I felt like it was a strong that's one. A, that's a good one. That's uh, a good one. I've, I've got a problem yeah. uh, as well. Uh, my problem, uh, so I, today was Renette's first day out of quarantine. Mm -hmm. No, that's my problem. She's, she's out of quarantine <laughs> now. She's <laughs> Okay. Uh, good advice yep. is... Shower her with affection. Oh, okay. Uh, no, go on. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't interrupt. <laughs> um, get her some flowers. Okay. Give her some things that she missed, like a couple of, you know, maybe a day with her friends. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets her out of the house and yep. it keeps you with um, being able to write okay, and do yeah, your other things. I do like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, bad advice? Bad advice. Um, isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, just just tell her it, it's a more precaution. You you got to. I heard you sneezing earlier. Like emotionally isolate or or physically? No, no, physically okay. isolate. Go back to your office. I've been emotionally isolating. I've well, good. That's good. Uh, but now she needs to see you mm -hmm. be gone, right? To know that you're doing it for her. Okay. So I would I would do that. That's uh, the thing I like about that is I'm getting what I want, but I'm telling her this is for you. Exactly. <laughs> That's good. Uh, bad advice. Awful. Awful. Uh, get a new wife, man. Get a what, new wife. Well, I mean, well, I'm looking at my watch right now, like sort of like a, how long has it been? Like, cause it, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be that marriage where it's like, oh shit. Like that. Did they, they just got married. Yeah. But she's, she's unclean now. She's had the Rona. Do you want to put your dick in that? Like seriously, dude. I mean, that's a lot of mileage, man. Mm. You could trade her in, you know? Clunkers for cash or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we, we should go on that note. Uh, but we, we, should, uh, we should talk about uh, what we learned tonight. And Ali, what have you learned tonight? I learned that if a woman were to stuff Doritos <laughs> in her ass, man... I, I would toss her salad 24-7. Mm, it'd be a taco salad. Yes. <laughs> uh, what did you learn, Todd? Uh, and I learned something tonight, too. Uh, I learned that my wife... I, my wife... <laughs> uh, uh, takes a lot of shit from me on this <laughs> podcast. You and, just learned this? Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking, like, she's my ticket out. Like, she's my Canadian citizenship. <laughs> if shit really hits the fan here, 
so uh, I'm, I'm going to go with option one. I'm going to shower her with, <laughs> with gifts. Sucker. Yeah. Yeah, sucker, but you know what? When the purge starts in America and <laughs> you see me over the Canadian wall. <laughs> Bro, I could just see Renette. The purge happens and she's just a pilot. Oh, jeez. You dropped your. Oh, sorry. You, sorry. You dropped your, your knife. Let me get that. You for lost you. a bullet in me. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, I watched the Forever Purge the other night and I, the whole time I was watching, I was like, God dang it. This just seems like the news. <laughs> like, this doesn't seem like a, a fantasy film. That, like, I watched it. I was like, shit, this is too real. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we're Mama's Comedy Show. We're here every Friday night at 8 p.m. Uh, find us on Facebook at Mama's Comedy Show or on Instagram at Mama's Comedy Show or on TikTok even at Mama's Comedy Show. Uh, Ali, where are you? Uh, you can find me on TikTok at A underscore Ali underscore Flores. You can find me. Still doing those underscores, yeah? Hell yeah. Okay. Um, you can find me on uh, on Instagram, Comedic Actor. Twitter, Comedic Actor Ali. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Totters. Uh, and uh, oh, I have books. You can find my books on Amazon. Uh, Todd Farron, T-O-D-D-F-E-R-E-N. There's a bunch of books. You'll find something you like. And that's it. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.